All right, I've been asked a couple of times this week how to add 3D to real video, in particular, looking at camera tracking and using 3ds max so here's a quick video of how we can do that i recorded this video and i'm just going to bring it into after effects and we'll create a new composition and we'll go to file export and we'll add it to the render queue and then we'll click on high quality and we'll change this to jpeg sequence and hit ok and then we will select somewhere to save it and save and we'll hit render and we'll let that render. And then what we're gonna do is add 3D camera tracking in After Effects. We're gonna export that out of After Effects with a camera and take it into 3ds Max, where we're gonna put in our 3D objects. We'll use a car and a, a shadow catcher. And then we'll line up the cameras and we'll set the light in and we'll render it out and then we'll bring it back into After Effects do some slight color adjustments, and then we'll have a car in our scene. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go to effects and presets, and I'm gonna type in 3D camera tracking, and there it is, and we'll drag and drop that onto our video clip. And that's gonna start analyzing. It might take a little while, depending on the length of your scene. In advance, we're gonna put on detailed analysis as well and we are gonna let this analyze. So I do have a whole course about how to use this with drone footage and putting architectural buildings into scenes so if you want to go deeper on this subject then check out that courses there'll be a link in the description and when that's done we can see we now have all of these tracking points and if i hit play or scrub through the timeline we can see they appear so these are what we want to export so i'm going to select one of them and hit create null and camera and that's going to create a null and a camera and then i'm going to right click and what we want to do is select a few of these to bring into 3ds max and i'd recommend keeping them on this flat plane so not up on the curb or on this wall and it's just going to make our life easier so i'm going to create some nulls and scrub through and i reckon like around 10 maybe 15 i mean you can't really have too many Not solid, we want a null. And I think that should do it. Next, we wanna use a script from AE Enhancers. I'll put a link in the description to this, but just right click and save as, and we'll save that. And then what we're gonna do is go to file, and we wanna to go to scripts, and we will run script. And there's our script, so we will open that up. And there's a few settings in here, so we're gonna to export to 3ds Max. Let's rename this, we'll call it road tracking. And I'm also going to go to options. We don't need the add four views for new Maya scene. And I'm actually going to change the scale to one to 10 and we'll hit close. And then all we have to do is select all our nodes and our camera and we'll hit export. And that's going to go through and export each one of them nodes, as you can see, and the camera. So now over in 3ds Max, let's bring in our viewport background. So I'll press Alt-B on the keyboard and we'll go to Use Files and Animated Background. And we'll go to Files and we will find where we saved that JPEG sequence from earlier. And we'll click on the first one, Load as Sequence, and we'll hit Open. And just note that there's 346 frames here. So I'll hit OK and we'll apply that to the active view and we'll hit OK. Something you're going to want to make sure you have on in preferences and viewport is update background whilst playing. And we want to make sure I know that we recorded that video at HD so we can see the outputs on HD and 1920. So make sure that our dimensions are the same. Shift F will turn on safe frames. So this is. Uh, what will render out and finally time configuration let's make sure that that is on 346 frames so then we've got our whole animation in here playing next up let's bring in a car and let's create a plane as well so this will be like our shadow catcher so it will help ground our 3d object into our video and let's open up cosmos 
We use V-Ray today, but if you wanted to use Corona, let me know and we can use that in future. And let's import a car. And whilst I'm here, I'm also going to import a HDRI. And let's make sure that our plane is big enough to catch all the shadows. So something like that should be all right. So we've got our light, we've got our shadow catcher and we've got our car. So now let's bring in the camera and our tracking points. To do this, I'm going to press control A to select everything and we'll just hide it for now. And then we'll go to scripting, run script, and there's road tracking, which we made earlier. And if I zoom out, we can see we've now got a camera and all the nodes. If I go to camera viewport, we can just about see, I'll make this bigger. We can see our nodes here. And when we press play, they stay in position, which is great. But you can also see our grid is here. So if I go back to the top view, you can see our camera is pointing down. And one thing with the tracking is that it, it can track the points against the video but it doesn't understand like where the camera is in 3D space or even the scale of it. So what we want to do before we begin, turn auto key on and off because there's something about this script that will have auto key on that you can't see and it will mess up later. So just make sure you tick on auto key on and off. And then with all of the nodes and the camera selected, let's group it. And what we want to do is Let's rotate this. And this darker line is our ground. This is why we did it all on the flat ground rather than up on the curb and walls is because we want to make sure all these nulls line up as best as possible on this black line. If your 3D model is kind of flying around in the scene, it's because these points aren't grounded. So just make sure to check them if you're having issues. And now if I unhide all, we can see our cars over here. The scaling is probably not right. But if we think about it, we want to rotate our camera like this. And then you can position it in the seam. And then we also can scale this up or down. So just eyeball it. And then you'll see because we scaled it, this has come off the ground. If we played it, the car's going to be kind of flying around all over the show. So just make sure that that's grounded. And this is, uh, yeah, a little bit of eyeballing. So it might take some time. So just take your time to get this right. All right. So with a bit of trial and error, I think we've got this in our scene. One thing I forgot to mention is the camera is brought in as a physical camera. So if we open this group, you want to go to V-Ray, Converters, and Scene Converter, and just change this a Convert Standard Cameras to Physical Camera and hit Convert, and it's going to convert your camera into a V-Ray camera. And then I'm going to change it from Physical Exposure to Exposure Value, and we'll just put that on 6 for now. And something else we'll want to do is change this plane into a Shadow Catcher, so they'll catch the shadows from our object and it will help it sit into the video a lot better. I also modeled a little bit of a curb onto here as well. So if we run an interactive render, we can see that the scene is super bright and it's using that HDRI and our camera. So what we can do is open up the material editor and let's create a new V-Ray bitmap. And I'm going to load up a photo I took of the area. And let's make that spherical. And then we'll select our HDRI. And so instead of using the HDRI image, we're going to actually use this photo I took. It's a bit of a hack. I've got another video about another way of doing this that's also worth checking out. So if we run an interactive render, we can see that our photo is in the background. And if we rotate this, Let's rotate it by like 90 and see where we're at. So we can see that really bit. We want to flip this image basically and then rotate our HDRI into a bit of a better position. We can also turn on ground project projection. And perhaps scale this down a little bit. Yeah, and I think something like that will work all right. 
And then what we can do is add a background. And you can't actually load up image sequences here. So we're just going to load up the first frame of our animation. And then the last piece of the puzzle is make your HDRI invisible. And there we have our car in the scene. And then what else you can do is add like a filmic tone map and some curves just to the car to help it sit a little bit better. And then something else would be add a V-Ray denoiser render element. And now all that's left to do is uh, turn on active segment. So we'll choose where we want to save this to. We'll create a new output folder. And we're going to save this as a PNG. And we'll hit save and we'll hit render and I will come back once this is rendered. So I loaded in our JPEG sequence as the back plate and then I loaded in our renders and on both of these I adjusted the levels a little bit um, and then I added an overall adjustment layer with some color correction and some noise. As you can see, our 3D is sitting within our video pretty well. And if you like this video, then I think you're going to love this video.